Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how you can efficiently make human base meshes for all your various character needs. So straight off, I'm not going to be sculpting these from scratch, because that takes a lot of time and this would be a very long video if that's what I was doing. Instead, we're going to cheat and we're going to use a free add-on called Camorph, or Charmorph, though I say Carmorph because it comes from character. And you can get this from GitHub, it is free. To do that, I've showed you how to use GitHub before, but just in case you don't know, follow the link in the description, click on code, and then you can download the zip from there. The other option is if you're a part of the Patreon, then you've got the zip file link there as well, because this is free and you are very welcome to share it around. Once you've got that downloaded, just go to Edit and Preferences, come to Add-ons, and then you go to Install and install that as normal. Because I've already got that installed, you can find that here. And importantly, you've got a couple of options here. The most important of which for me is to just click that Adult Mode being on. That means that the models are going to effectively have genitalia, but more importantly, because that's relatively irrelevant, I think we're probably going to put clothes on most of our models. The bit that matters about that is that it doesn't put one, a separate mesh on that's underwear, which is annoying and it also doesn't leave blanks in the mesh where that underwear is covering and as we want a whole mesh we're going to want that so that's just something to make sure you've got that clicked now while you're here as well i would strongly advise you if you don't have it already to activate rigify rigify is an add-on that comes with blender you just need to click that to make sure it is on and that is going to be useful later on in the process you don't have to use this but as you'll see it is very helpful once you've done that save your preferences and then you're ready to go. And this add-on, if we just press the end panel, is located there. So end panel, and then you come down to where you've got Caramorph, and you've got your options here. You've got an option for finding your library, so you can add things in, and you've got all of these, but the most important bit you need to decide is what your base mesh is gonna be. Now, you'll notice that a lot of this says MB Lab. This is actually based on some ideas from an add-on called MB Lab. It's just been rewritten and works slightly differently and I think it works a bit better. You've got a male and a female and you've got this Antonia Polyglon there as well, which actually for the female model is probably the better one. We're gonna use a male one, but do play around and see what you like. Once you've done that, you just want to go down, none of this is particularly relevant, and then all of this bit at the bottom, which at the moment doesn't have anything, is going to be things that you're going to change once you've got your character. So I'm going to click Import Character, and we've got our male model. Now let's just work down and talk through some of these. So the first is you've got a type, and you can go through pretty much the major archetypal races. So you've got African, and you'll notice we just change all the features. You've got Caucasian, Asian, and Latin, but as well as that, you do have an anime version, and you'll notice all the proportions change with this. You've got dwarf, and then you've got elf as well. Now, obviously, depending on whether you put male or female is gonna change that. I'm gonna go for Caucasian just to begin with, but I want to be really clear about this. All of these things that have been changed very quickly by changing to these different races can all be, once again, changed later on as we go through this. You've also got some options here. Now, these are what I'd refer to as the large scale options. They make really general changes of the whole of this character. So you've got age, mass and tone. Now, again, all of this you're going to be able to modify as we carry on down. But we sort of start off at a maybe middle 20s age and you can go younger. And again, notice just how it's changing all the proportions or especially as it's coming up to my birthday, we can start getting older and older and older and you get a little bit wider. I'm starting to recognize this in myself. So a little depressing there. You can also change mass so you can make him skinnier or larger and you can change tone as well. So again, we've got less fit and we've got more fit in terms of muscle mass. So that's done as a whole. Importantly, we've also got some other options like randomizing things as well. But I think the most exciting is if you go to, if I just bring this out, the category, you've got different places that you can look at specifically. Some are very face related, for example, just the eyelids or ears. And then you've got things that are more general. So for example, arms, cheeks, bodies, jaw. And if I just show a few of these, you'll notice they'll change them all. So for example, if I come over here, and we go to, let's say, the jaw. We've got all these options of fiddling around with jaw angle, like the front jaw angle, looking a little bit, turning into a werewolf there. But you've also got things like the back of the jaw and how pronounced that is. And then other bits like under and overbite. So loads of things to fiddle around with. You can also, let's say, change things. I don't know. Let's go with the stomach. 
And this might be something where you've got just, and you'll notice it says local fat. So you've just got specifically, if you've got a bit of a pot belly there, or you're a bit slimmer there. And again, you've got stomach volume and things like that. So you can sort of play around with these together to make something that you want. And again, if I just go, I don't know, body, you can change things like the height. So you can get larger and smaller. So you could do something like a hobbit, which is meant to be proportionally the same as a human. You could go for something that's a bit bigger, but normally I'd probably just do that with the scale later. And then if we just go to say the arms, you've got a lot more things here. So you've got things like forearm length. So you can have something again, a little bit more turning into a werewolf with the elongated arms. And you've got things like tone. So you could have more or less muscly. Say this is a person that's not particularly muscular, but is maybe an archer, so needs bigger arms. So you've got a load of options there on changing different specifics of your model. And you can move these around as you want. Now, the other thing that's important to be able to come on here is that if you come down and you click rig, you do have the option of adding a rig to your model. And if you come down to Rigify settings, you get all of your Rigify settings, which is why we wanted to add things in earlier. So for example, we can put inverse kinematics on there. It does say that you can limit the IK rotation, but it only limits it in certain places. So do be a little bit careful of that. It's not perfect. Now you can click add rig at this point, which will bring in the rig. And you can, I believe, go back and then start editing the morphology here while it's rigged but that gets really slow and I wouldn't advise it. Also, generally you want to sculpt in this T pose anyway. So I'd normally be bringing this in and then making all of my changes later. And once you're happy with that, all you need to do is come down to finalization and then you can click finalize. And that will take a little bit of time to sort out, but then you end up with this very nicely rigged character. Now this, if I just go into edge mode, you can see is a really nicely broken down model in most instances. It's going to work really well for adding detail onto or ripping bits of detail off. And importantly, it has got all of our rigging done to it. So we can see everything there, which means usefully is if you add anything onto this, you can then just add it to this rig. Also, if you come onto the rig and then tab into pose mode, you can see how easy this is to pose. So I could just, let's say, rotate that around like we're looking off to, or glancing off to the side, or we can do things like R and then open the mouth, which is really cool. And you can see how everything moves with it. Now I'm actually gonna leave that open. We're gonna come back to that in a second and we can do things like turning the head. So we could have him looking this way. We can move the hands around. If I come to, I believe it's that red one for the overall mode. So that's G and we can move that up. And because it's rigged with inverse kinematics, it will move everything with it. So we've got that up there and we can, let's say, move that hand up and then let's rotate that round. So we've got something like that. Or we can, let's grab this one. Bring that in there. Maybe a little dancey pose, who knows? Or uh, let's get the leg. If you want to do the Games Workshop special of having him on a tactical rock, we can start getting that tactical rock there. So he's standing on that, or he's just doing a little pose. So just some things to note. I'm just gonna press H to hide that rig. So at the moment we've got our object and we can still come into vertex mode and edit this, and it will then come back to our posed model, or we can come up here and then make sure we apply our rig. So we've got everything here, or we can just click apply all. There's a link in the description if you don't have that apply all button to find out where that is. And at this point we can now come in and start modifying this if we want to. Though, once again, I would probably be sculpting this in the classic T pose and then posing it afterwards. Now, just some points to know in terms of 3D printing. This is not 3D printable at this point. It's gonna have problems. Mostly because some of these parts, if I go into edge mode, are separate. For example, if I come to this I and then press L for all the linked bits, you'll see, and if we come inside the head, that we've got a whole eyeball here. We probably don't want that. So I'd be deleting that out. So we have that. And then what you wanna do is close off these parts. So you're gonna press Alt and select that edge, and then you're gonna press F to fill, though that isn't actually gonna be a flat fill. So that's probably not great. What we probably want to do is press F3 and then go to grid fill. So that will make quads. So that's probably the way that I'd fill that in. We've also got these parts, for example, all of these, if I just go to edge mode again, these eyelash bits, 
We don't want those, so I'd probably L and then sort of select those other bits. The other thing that we need to fill in in terms of a gap is if we come to the mouth, we've got all of these things like teeth and the tongue. If I, again, edge mode, we probably don't want a lot of these. So if I come to, let's say, a tooth, an L to select everything there, that'd be worth deleting. And we probably L want to delete the tongue as well so that we don't have that hole. And whether you want that going all the way in that far is entirely up to you. If I had the mouth open, I'd probably be sculpting some teeth and just maybe closing this off. But again, same thing, F3 and then grid fill. We'll sort that out for now so you've got something solid. But at the moment, this jaw is really skinny or really thin at certain points like around the lips. So that's gonna have problems printing. If I was you, I'd probably close this off a little bit earlier or put something in the mouth like some teeth. They're the only major gaps that you need to know about. The nostrils are fine, they're perfectly closed in and I believe the ears are as well. So you've got no issues with the ears. It's just the mouth and the eyes that you probably want to delete out. But after that, you can sculpt away, you can come into this and then go to things like sculpt mode and you can remesh to get the mesh smaller if you want to, or you can use all of your standard sculpting techniques. So a really great tool to be able to make a range of characters with a range of different looks really quickly and effectively without you having to sculpt a whole base mesh. As always, if you found this video useful, it'd be really appreciated if you give it a like to help the wonderful YouTube algorithm spread it around, perhaps subscribe. And if you're interested, check out the Patreon. It's got all of this great content a week early, ad free, and you get other great things as well. Have a great day, guys.